Finally, filtered and kegged, but not before one more very important step. You've got to realize that like for a brewer in a, in a craft brewery, the best analytical tool you've got is your mouth. So that's what we do. You just got to take a sample, you have a good look at it, you know, so if it visually looks great, if it tastes great, well then, let's put it in the keg and share it with the world. Well, let's do that. Let's yep. get our handprints over this stout. Absolutely. So, so remind me, Noel, from, uh, from, from when you started this, when, when was this just water? How long has it taken to get to this stage? Well, as we say, it's a uh, grain to glass. It takes two weeks to turn a pint. Grain to glass. I like yeah. that. Two weeks. Yeah. That's good. I, I, can, I can really taste the, the roasted. I, I don't want to say burnt, but it's, it's there. It's... Oh, it's a good beer. It's an Irish beer. Absolutely. Born in Dublin. After a perfect pint of Darcy's Irish Stout, it's time for the thirsty traveler to head south. We make our way through the Irish countryside to the busy port town of Waterford. Back in 1783, George and William Penrose founded the Waterford Glass House and started producing their world-renowned Waterford Crystal. I thought it would be a great opportunity to pick up the perfect stout glass for the perfect pint. I've been here five minutes, I'm already making crystal. Oh yeah, that's brilliant. I love it. How much would that fetch in the gift <laughs> shop? About five bucks. Johnny, what have you done? You've ruined it. Yeah, that's okay. So David saw how, uh, how awful my glass blowing was and decided to make me a personal thirsty traveler, Beerstein. Thanks, buddy. No you problem. started it. This is going to be my glass? Well, this is the first stage of the process. and I can shape any shape I want, so we're going to make a Beerstein, so it's going to be narrow. So I'm going to pass it down to John now, and he's going to put the handle on this. All right, it's okay. Uh, I mean, how did you guys learn to do this? How long have you been doing it? Well, it takes eight years to actually master the craft, but it's an ongoing process. It's like playing a musical instrument. You never get to a stage where it's complete. We learn something each day and every day. What, what John and his uh, partner he, are doing? He's going to stick on the handle here. He knows exactly where to put it on. He holds it up, stretches it. He'll decide where to cut to get the right length. He's stretching it here, and it's cooling at the same time. He's moving it through the he's air. Moving. There's a handle on. He's turning it around the other way to leave it hang. And then just push it up against the So he's using the weight of the crystal. Pick, and the gravity. Pull it, pull it down. down. A nice glass of stout's going to taste pretty good in that. Absolutely. They have a saying about Waterford in relation to wines and beers. A good beer deserves Waterford, and a bad one needs it. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is, my thirsty traveler, beer stein. Oh, it's great. You should feel the weight on this thing. Oh, great. Oh, man. Oh, no, no, no. 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 cherish this forever. Tomorrow, we head to a gothic stout stronghold, and I learn to cook with stout's perfect companion. Cork City in County Cork, the largest county in all of Ireland and the country's second largest city. This has been a stout stronghold for over 200 years and has been a known brewing center as far back as medieval times. The traces of this medieval city can be found throughout Cork even today. By example, this thing right here, the parapet stone from the original executioner's house. When you screwed up in Cork, they cut your head off and put it right here so everyone can see. Beamish and Crawford are located in the heart of what was this medieval city and is said to rival only Guinness as one of the oldest breweries in Ireland. Not long after, Murphy's Brewery started up. They brew their own unique traditional stout and have a strong presence in this county. Here in the city of Cork, 1913 is a year that still gets mentioned often. That was when, at the Murphy's Brewery here in Cork, that number five exploded, sending 23,000 gallons of the finest Irish stout 
flowing through the streets, ending up in the Lee River. And thus, happy hour was born. But none of these established breweries are immune to the microbrewery invasion. The Franciscan Well Brewery is another new microbrewery producing an exciting new Irish stout. But there's more to Cork City than just stout, as my new friend Bob Carpenter will show me. It must be Bob. Hi, Kevin. How nice you to meet you. Very welcome to Cork. Thank you this very much. The old English market here. And I found That's it. where we're going to buy all our, our food oh, for today. Oh, it's all fresh so, in here. Oh, thanks, Bob. The only way to describe this experience is a food carnival. See, that's why I eat chicken and beef. <laughs> Fresh is the word here in this market. Most of these guys were swimming last night. There's everything you can imagine here in this place and a few things you couldn't or didn't want to imagine. Ah, uh, uh, he's a nice guy. How would you Go cook? On, Kevin, give him all I, I, I don't there, really want to give him a kiss. He's mostly for sure. No, I want well, to. Once we get our supplies, Bob spots one more necessity before we leave. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I don't even know what this is, Bob. Oh, this, what, what is now, this? this is the stomach of a uh, sheep. This is a sheep stomach? Yeah, it's lining a sheep stomach. If you're, you know, if it's very easy. I, I happen to have a very good stomach, so I, I don't, I don't think really you might have a good stomach in, after this, Kevin. I don't need to partake of this. We, we're we cooking keep, we seafood. We, I have salmon yeah. and oysters. I, and we I'll keep have this no for, room for the yeah, right. we, we keep this for another day. Oh. <laughs> if he serves this to me, I'm dining and dashing. <laughs> okay, are we done? Thank you very much. Armed with our fresh seafood, we head south to Kinsale. Kinsale is known as the gourmet capital of Ireland and hosts a major gourmet food festival every year. Bob and his wife, Maura, own Annalise Restaurant, just off the harbour front. Bob. Hi, the, Kevin. The hands are washed. Now what? Tonight, Bob's secret ingredient is Irish stout. Now, it turns out that there's lots of recipes that use stout. Bob's picked a couple for me that work well with his specialties. We start with fresh oysters marinated in stout. Just, just, they're just sitting in there. They're swimming. They're sucking right. it in. So we're, we're going to open up six of these on sort of with a Guinness, and that's part of the starter with the... Uh, with the other avocado. Then a chunk of beef tenderloin. We shove it down. That's one fill of steak. We start with the next one. We leave an incision like that. We just fill up the oysters with the Guinness. So the oysters and the steak. I've never really. That's right. It's a bit of surf and turf. It's, it's a carpet bagger. This is known as a carpet bagger. It's a carpet bagger. bagger. Toss it on a hot grill. Then it's time for the prawn and mixed appetizer. This is the smoked salmon. We have the avocado, and we have a very nice introduction. It's a Guinness mayonnaise. And it's a bowl of, um, a bowl this size, we say a cup full of mayonnaise, a half cup full of cream, and a cup full of, half cup full of Guinness mixed together. It just gives it um, a tangy taste. The other type of product, mayonnaise. And uh, you just mix this together with the cream to make it a little bit That's more great. lighter, and the Guinness. It's light and fluffy. Along with our stout incorporated delights, Bob amazes us with some other culinary treats featuring giant prawns, halibut, and oysters. And there's no tripe in this meal, is there? No, no, no I just no, put you, a you, tripe underneath. You've there. left the tripe out for now, at least. <laughs> then, just before the dinner rush, Bob, his wife, Maura, and their friend, Natalie, and I it's sit clean. down for a real Irish That's feast. That's really creamy. Isn't it? Isn't mm -hmm. it lovely? You said it was going to be creamy. The one bite thing might have been a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put it open. My stout soaked oyster infused steak carpetbagger is incredible, as is everything else. Thank you. See, I, I think you should mark up the stout mayonnaise. Oh, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it it's really a good works. one, yeah. Well, yeah, well, with my cheers. Cheers. glass of stout. Cheers. 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 Thank you very much. Cheers, Cheers. Natalie. This looks pleasure. like it's going to be. What, what do you see? What do you see in there? Slanta, 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 slanta. Yeah. Okay, there's slons, there's but slanta. Mm. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> While I leave Bob and his family to clean up and do the dishes, I'm off to an Irish pub to enjoy some music, new friends, and a couple of pints of stout.